The Hebrew language is also a root-oriented language. We'll be talking a little bit more about that. But in our language, we use words independently. We, there's really no connection that we use of words. But Hebrew is very root system oriented. And uh, there's a whole grouping of words that are related in meaning. And by studying those, this is one of the things I do at the research center, is studying all of these, and this is what the lexicon is kind of a result of, is studying these grouping of words so that we can get a better Hebraic understanding of what these words mean. Starting at the top there, we've got the word ham. It's actually also the name of Noah's, <clears throat> one of Noah's sons, ham or ham. And it means hot. It means hot. Ham or ham probably had a pretty bad temper. The second one is chema, and that means sun. Well, we see a pretty good connection there. The sun, hot. Okay. The third one is chemet. It's a skin bag. Or you know those uh, water bags some people carry, the, the, the leather bags to put water in? Originally they were wine skins or they put water in them. These are skin bags. That's a chemet. Now what's the connection between a skin bag, a sun, and hot? Let's go to the next one. Chama is curds, cheese. What do these four have in common? Well, that's true. That's very good. That's right. They all have, are the, come from the same parent root, cham. Chet, mem is the parent root. The other three are child roots. And they all have those letters in common. But what do the actual definitions have in common? Very good. Very good. Somebody knows it. Somebody knows the answer. I struggle with this one. This is one of the things I do. Yes. Oh, she said the recipe for cottage cheese. Seriously. Okay, and I'll explain that more in a minute. But one of the things I do is when I'm looking at all these words, that's what we're looking for is the common theme to these words so we can get a better understanding of what these words mean. I had no clue. I'm looking at these and I go, I don't know what this is. So I started doing some research. And I found this old story, an ancient story from the Near East, where a man traveled with his donkey to another land, visited there, and they had this great milk from their goats. It was really good milk. So he wanted to take some home with them to his family. So he, he loaded up his uh, skin bags with this milk and traveled on back home. And when he got home and opened it up, it was cheese. Okay, what happened? Well, from the bouncing and the jostling and the enzymes that are in the leather, it curdled the milk into cheese in the, and in the heat of the sun. So the way that they would make cheese is they would take a skin bag, fill it with milk, hang it in the sun, and then rock it back and forth. And so that was the connection to understanding what this word come meant in all of these words. Uh, we are a product of the Greco-Roman world. We think from a Greco-Roman perspective. When we speak, we would say something like, if we want to talk about the day, it's a beautiful day out, although it's not today, but we could say it's a beautiful day. Now, compare that with Eastern concrete understanding. The eastern concrete would be, the sun gives warmth on my face. That even sounds a little biblical, doesn't it? Doesn't even that kind of sound biblical? That's the way they talk. The differences here between the top and the bottom, and the top one, it's adjective, beautiful. It uses adjective. We love our adjectives. We love to use our adjectives. Hebrew does not like adjectives. Hebrew likes verbs, gives. The other difference is, is that in the top one, I... In that sentence, I am saying what the, the day is like. I'm referring to something else, whereas in Hebrew, everything's internalized. It gives warmth to my face. You always bring things back to yourself. What's the difference between abstract and concrete? Concrete concepts are those things that you can see, hear, smell, taste, or touch. Okay, Those are concretes. Abstracts are those things that you can't do those five things. For example, bless. And we're going to talk a lot more about the word bless later, but please draw me a picture of bless. Can you smell bless? See bless? Can you hear bless? Really, no, you cannot. They're abstracts. They're pure abstracts. We love abstracts in our language. The Greeks love abstracts. The Hebrews hate them. They don't use them. Well, they do in a sense, but every abstract in Hebrew thought 
can be traced to a picture of action. Okay, and these are some of the things that we'll be talking about. The past and the future, which one is in front of you? The future is in front of you. What's behind you? The past. Not in Hebrew thought. It's the other way around. In Hebrew thought, let's take a look at these words. Tamul. Tamul is the word for yesterday. That's the past, right? It comes from the root mul, which means to be in front. Yesterday is in front of you. Okay, now I'll explain why in a minute. Machar means tomorrow it comes from the root. Achar means to be behind you. So in, he, in Hebrew thought, the past is in front of you, the future is behind you. Why? It's actually very simple. Anybody know? That's one part that is correct because you know the past. You're responsible for the future, right, but the past is laid out in front of you, you know it. It's there for you to see. Can you see the future? The future, you cannot see it. Ah, there were some, the prophets, who could. They had a special gift. But on the average, we cannot see it. The future is behind you because you cannot see it. Okay, this is one area where in Hebrew thinking is 180 degrees from Greek or Greco-Roman thinking. What is that a picture of? What Hebrew concept am I trying to describe here? Eternity. Does that look like eternity? This is how Hebrews would understand eternity. Look at that far horizon there, those mountains off in the distance. What's beyond those? Don't know. In the, the future or the past, the very distant future or the very distant past, it's very hazy. We don't, it, it, it's, off, it's beyond the horizon. Beyond the horizon. And that's what the word olam means. We see in our Bible, olam. And we see it translated as eternity. It doesn't mean eternity. It means beyond the horizon. So, le'olam va'ed, forever and ever. It does not mean an eternal, <laughs> an eternal eternity. It just means a very long time. It's even beyond what I can understand. So that would be a Hebraic understanding of eternity. Okay, what do I have a picture of there? Pencil. Would somebody please um, describe that for me? I'm looking for a guinea pig. Somebody describe the pencil for me. Now, what type of words were you using a lot of? Adjectives. Round, cylindrical, long, yellow. We love our adjectives. But Hebrew does not use adjectives. And it's actually more of what you said over here. It's a writing utensil. I write with it. Hebrew does not care about what something looks like. They don't. They do not care about what something looks like. They care about how it functions and how it relates to me. They always bring it back to me. It's not you write with it, it's I write with it. Genesis 6.15, better sheet 6.15. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits, its breadth, breadth 50 cubits, and its height, 30 cubits. Is this author trying to tell us what the ark looks like? It's a description, that is very true. But is it trying to tell you what it looks like? No. If he did, he did a pretty poor job of it. Because it's just a box. And by the way, if you look at a lot of people's renderings of an ark, you do see a box. Because they think that they're trying to tell you what the thing looks like. What's he trying to tell you here? The dimensions. It's huge. Not, not, well, part of how to make it, but how big it is. He's trying to tell you this thing's going to hold a whole lot of animals. It's purpose, the function of the ark, function's a key word in Hebrew. Always keep that word in mind when you're reading the biblical text. The function of this, the descriptive function is to tell you that it's going to hold a lot of animals. 